Hey there, and welcome to the last section, the last section, sec, uh, sub element F of element one of the tech 2022 to 2026 technician license exam. Let's go ahead and go over these questions. When must the station and its records be available for FCC inspection? The correct answer is at any time upon request by an FCC representative. They come a knocking. You better start getting your papers out. So question two is how often must you identify with your FCC assigned call sign when using tactical call signs such as race headquarters? The correct answer is C, at the end of each communication and every 10 minutes during a communication. So pretty much the same as when you got to identify anyways. Question three, when are you required to transmit your assigned call sign? At least every 10 minutes during and at the end of a communication. What language may you use for identification when operating in a phone subband? English and English only. Question five, what method of call sign identification is required for a station transmitting phone signals? Well, here's what's interesting. You can send your call sign using CW or you can speak it using phone emission. Now there is a speed limit on how fast you can send it in CW. I want to say it's 20 words a minute. Question six from sub element F. Which of the following self-assigned indicators are acceptable when using a phone transmission? So let's say that you're from Canada, Kilo Lima 7, Charlie Charlie, and you're operating in three land. So these three choices are all acceptable because we're all describing the stroke or the slash or the slant. Boop. Da 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 da. In, in CW, that's what it would sound like. But all of these choices are correct as long as you are indicating that you're at the end operating from outside of your call location. Question number seven. Which of the following restrictions apply when a non-licensed person is allowed to speak a foreign, oh goodness, not foreign language, speak to a foreign station using a station under the control of a licensed amateur operator? These are third-party communications. Uh, that'd be like your kid using the radio under your call sign, that's third party. The foreign station must be in a country with which the US has a third party agreement. So you would have to do your due diligence and research to see if that person's uh, foreign station is in that third party agreement. What is the definition of third party communications? A message from a control operator to another amateur station control operator on behalf of another person. That is the correct answer is A from question 8. Question 9. What type of amateur station simultaneously retransmits the signal of another amateur radio state or amateur station on a different channel or channels? This is called a repeater station. It, yeah, most repeaters pull in from an offset and transmit on a different frequency. So that is a repeater station. Space stations, uh, going back, space stations can also do this and, and satellites, they can hear on one band and transmit on another. Question 10, who is accountable if a repeater inadvertently retransmit communications that violate the FCC rules? That is the control operator of the originating station. So the person who is at the originating station is the person who's using the repeater. They're the ones that are in control, so they're accountable. 
And question 11, and this is the last question from element 1 and the last question from sub-element F. Which of the following is a requirement for the issuance of a club station license grant? And that club must have at least four members. Don't be fooled by the rest of these question or answer choices. The club must have four members. So again, these are all memorization questions. Sub element one is just memorization of a bunch of rules. So and the next time we come back, we'll be in element two. This is Robbie, W1RCP. Hope to catch you again. Check out that playlist. Make sure that you are studying up to get that technician exam. Go ahead. Go out there. Take you some practice tests. Learn them and learn them quick. Learn them. Put them to heart so that you can use these rules and know them and abide by them and operate as a amateur radio and amateur radio operator. All right. Thanks so much. I'm Rob W1RCP73.